okay so this is uh, lecture 31 but we are uh, we're going to be continuing from the from where we left off uh, hopefully all of you remember this picture okay so this is the well, this is not supposed to come okay so this is the uh, trellis on which we've been decoding a convolutional code the four state convolutional code right so the 1 plus d plus d square and 1 plus d square with convolutional code and uh, we came up to the third stage where something interested uh, started to happen okay so i was looking at the the first state right after stage 3 okay stage 0 after stage 3 okay so if you look at that you see there are two possibilities now for the first time you are getting two paths coming into state 0 one from the previous state 0 another from the previous state 1 okay so now you ask the question from state 0 before stage 1 to state 0 after stage 3 okay that is the those are the paths i am concerned about which is the path of minimum metric okay if you ask that question then all you have to worry about is out of all the paths that came through state 0 in the previous stage and state 2 in the previous stage you have to pick out that path which has the minimum okay so then you go to state 0 and then you see it's a very simple problem because because one part has only one branch okay and that is a very easy thing to do so you look at the minimum weight minimum metric path at state 0 which is a 3.24 metric path and the minimum metric path at state 2 a uh, state 1 which is a 7.64 metric path Okay, so out of from these two paths, you try to join a branch to come to state 0. Okay, you can either join the top branch or the branch below. So, you see, if you join the top branch to the previous state 0, you get a total metric of 4.3, which is smaller than the metric you would get if you chose the other branch. So, you pick that one. Okay, so use the same logic for every single state. Okay, you have to do it for every single state. Okay, so that's also quite important. Okay. So, so let's go to the other branches. I don't know if someone has been industrious enough to go back and work out the branch matrix for the other branches. If you have not done it, please do it now. 0.5.1. Tell me what the branch matrix are for the other branches. So you have to compute only two branch metrics, right? One for plus one, minus one, and the other for minus one plus one, right? So you compute for those two, and then you can just put it in each of these places. What's for the top branch? What's the metric for the I'm sorry? 3.06 for which one? The topmost one here? You get 3.06. So why am I not happy with that? 3.06, it's fine? Okay. I guess I should be happy. What about the next one, the one below? I'm sorry? 5.46. 1.46 yeah i am happy with 1.46 that seems like a so the next one is also 1.46 then 3.06 okay do you get that okay so then you repeat the same process for the other two states okay so which one would you pick this one will clearly be a winner okay and for this again this one would be a winner. Okay. Okay, I'm going to ask a few questions now. Okay, so we come up to this stage. Well, let's stop here. I'm going to ask a few questions now. Okay. If you have to enumerate all the possible paths starting from stage 0 up to the end of stage 3, how many different paths will you get? Okay, one answer is 4. Okay, is any other answer? If you have to enumerate all the paths, forget about metric, all the paths, how many paths should you have? 
all the valid paths yeah of course valid paths valid paths but i don't care about minimum metric maximum metric nothing I'm just give me a total number of paths how do you compute that so don't, don't worry too much about it see every path corresponds to a code word so all you have to do is compute the total number of code words how do you compute the total number of code words total number of code words equals the total number of total number of messages possible right so all you have to do is find out how many different messages can you have up to stage 3 okay how many different messages messages can you have eight right eight but only three message bits eight possibilities so you should have eight different paths valid paths corresponding to valid code words up to stage 3 at the end of stage 3 you should have eight different paths what i have actually done now is i'm telling you that the paths that are in red ending in each of those four states how many of them are there only four i have already eliminated four the other four paths i will not consider i don't have to consider ever again right why is that true because the same logic once again minimum the path of minimum metric has to flow through one of these four states after stage three and it's enough if i look at the minimum path that comes to each of these states okay because if the path of minimum metric goes through a particular state i can split it into two okay, right that's the logic so you use the same logic over and over again you get very simple uh, results out of that okay so you have only four okay so let's do one more okay just to go through this uh, rigorous exercise just do one more and you'll see one more interesting thing that's happening if you do one more state okay so what are the metrics here 1.64 plus 3.06 what is that 4.7 right this one here is uh, 6.7 and this one here is 3.1 okay so you write down the metrics those metrics are called the state metrics after stage 3 so on okay so to do for one more and we'll stop sorry is that a question i'm sorry yeah i'll i'll give you yeah so you want received vector values uh, okay so i'll just pick uh, I'll pick I'll pick the easiest one. Pick 0.5 minus 0.5. This was easy, no? This was easy, right? So we'll pick just 0.5 minus 0.5. Okay. Top 4 or 2.5? Everybody agrees? What about the bottom 4? Point? Point 0.5? All 4 are point 0.5? No. no. 4.5 and point 0.5. Which are the 4.5s? Topmost is 4.5. Point 0.5. 0.5, 4.5. Am I right? Okay, go ahead and do the computations. Am I right? Okay. So now, now repeat the same computation once again. After stage 4, how many different total paths do I have? 
16. How many paths am I considering because of this algorithm? Only 4. See that 4 remains 4 as you keep going while the total number of valid paths will keep increasing, will keep getting multiplied by 2. Okay. So while the total number of valid paths are growing exponentially in k, which is the message length, the number of paths that you are actually considering after a particular stage only grow linearly in k, but they grow exponentially in memory. So k times 2 power mu. Okay. So that is the number of, uh, well, not k times 2 power mu. Only 2 power mu paths you will consider, but you will have to eventually store all k also. So that's the that's the complexity roughly. Okay. So even as it as you keep going, the number of paths you actually store is only 2 power mu. It doesn't keep increasing beyond that. Okay, so it's good good to have a name for these paths. So these paths that you're actually considering are called survivor paths. Okay, so these are the survivor paths after a particular stage. Okay, so suppose I have to list the survivor paths after stage 4. I want you to write down the survivor paths after stage 4. Okay, how will we write the paths? We will write it as a sequence of states. Okay, that is the easiest to do. So, I want to write down the survivor path after stage 4. So, what is the survivor path ending at stage 0? Okay, so survivor path ending at stage 0. So, I need a notation for this. So, I will basically say SP 4 0. So, that means after the fourth stage, the survivor path ending at state 0. Okay, so what is this? 0, 0, right, 0, 0, 0, okay, I should have 5, 5 states define my path, right, am I right, the top path which just goes all the way through in the all 0 states, so likewise write down SP4, 1, SP4, 2 and SP4, Sorry. So easiest way to find survival path is to backtrack. Okay. If you start at 0 and start going, you will get confused. Okay. So backtrack from state 1. Go to the previous state. Previous state. Because the previous state will always be unique from a particular state. The other way it will not be unique. Okay. Because one state can go to can have both branches being in the survival paths. But previous way it cannot happen. So it will be always unique. So you can backtrack, but if you can see it sufficiently in advance, you'll see how it works. Okay, so it's going to be 0, 0, 2, 3, 1. Do you agree? That's going to be SP4, 1. What about SP4, 2? 0, 0, 0, 0, 2. What about SP4, 3? 0, 0, 0, 2. Okay, so, so maybe you stare at it and maybe you notice something. You will say, okay, this is one example. You are not really showing anything very spectacular here. But you can already see one thing happening. What is happening to all the survival paths? They are beginning to merge in the initial, pl initial places. Okay, So that is an interesting thing that will always happen. One can imagine why it should happen. But you can see that this is happening in this example. All the four survival paths in the first two states are the same. Right, so they have merged there. In fact, many of them are same in the first three states. Okay, so this is something that will happen in the Viterbi algorithm. As you keep going further and further down the trellis, you'll see all the survivor paths will merge up to a point. Okay, so what does it mean? Once the survivor paths have merged, what does it mean? Yeah, your decoding is complete till there, right? Do you agree? Suppose at some point you observe that your survivor paths are exactly the same up to some previous uh, delay then up to that your decoding is over because whatever your whatever happens later you will definitely come back to that as your chosen path okay so if your survivor paths have merged up to a certain point you can happily conclude your decoding for for up to those points okay so in fact what happens in practice is you do something suboptimal okay so you observe that at a at some point some 10, 10 stages before, typically the survivor paths merge. Okay? So you don't actually check after that. So you kind of finish there and say, after this I will declare whatever happens later. Some, some such suboptimal thing you do in practice just to 
but that that's pretty good that's usually very very good but this will always happen all the all the survivor paths will typically merge after you go through uh, a certain distance on the trails okay so that's that's something interesting which will help you in your uh, decoding okay so now we have to complete it right so at any point you're ending up with four paths i want only one path finally i don't want four paths right so that that you'll see will happen when you start using the termination okay suppose i say i'm going to terminate after this okay so so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut and paste this into the next one and then maybe move it slightly or maybe i'll move just itself slightly to the left okay and then we can see okay that's a nice thing in doing it with computer right so i can do all kinds of fancy stuff like this even if i go for pellet so i've moved it to the left i'm going to try and terminate now and add uh, do this for a couple of more stages and you'll see finally the decoder will just output the valid uh, code okay so let's do that so so we have to do one more stage but i'm going to terminate now so what does it mean when i terminate there's no more messages message is still zero message message bit is zero i know the message bit but i don't know the actual code word bits okay so i don't know how it actually went through okay so so when i put in zeros what are the next states i'll get zero and one right one and then finally when i put in one more zero i'll get zero okay so i'm going to give you some more uh, outputs i don't know i just want to pick some random outputs uh point 1 0.7. Will I pick this before? No. Okay. And then point minus 0.2 minus 0.8. Okay. These are my two outputs. Minus 0.2 minus 0.8 and 0.1.7. Go ahead and do the complete decoding. You'll have to do state matrix, branch matrix, state matrix, branch matrix like that. I'm going to do it on the board but you don't have to do the same thing. Okay, what are the branch metrics for the first thing? Anyone who's done this? Zero point nine for the last top one. Yes. The next one is four point one. one below that So what are the branch metrics? Five point, one point six, one point three, and three point seven. Okay, so this is going to be seven point eight, no, seven point seven. The top thing.
8.1 with the top thing right okay and then what about branch matrix here For the last one Point six eight, point six eight, and then four point six eight. So clearly, you would pick this, make it eight point seven eight. Okay, so this is just an arbitrarily cooked up example. Maybe in real life it won't be this crazy. Okay, so. Okay, so finally, what do you do? What's your output path or your output code word? So you start from the last one and backtrack. Okay, so it'll actually be. So how many stages we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. So it'll be SP six zero. That will be your. Output. What will be SP six zero? Zero 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 two one zero. That will be your output. Okay, so I'm going to write that down. Next, so the output path is SP six zero, which is which in our case was zero 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 two one zero. Okay, so what's the message? You had right. I'm sorry. You don't need to go back to the trellis and look at the input. This is a feed forward thing. So, what is always the input? Input at a particular stage will be the first bit of the next state. Okay. So, all you have to do is extract the first bit from the next state, and you will get your u hat. So, the first state is ignored. From the next state onwards, it is zero, 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 one. That's it. Okay, the last two are not messages, right? They are zeros to drive you back to the so the termination zeros. Okay, the last two zeros. This is your you had. Okay, in a feedback, if if the if your encoder had some feedback and it was a crazy shift register type thing, then you can't do this very simple thing. Then you have to go back and look at your uh, some table and figure it out. But if it is a feed forward system, then the next state is very very easy and simple to figure out. Right, the next state pretty much holds the input. Okay. All right. Any questions on this process? It's a very simple process. Any observations? Any comments? Okay. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is just for completeness sake, introduce a whole bunch of notations and describe what happens at stage i in slightly abstract terms. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do next. And uh, I mean, if you understood the algorithm, you don't need this. But uh, just to just to put everything together, it's it's, uh, it's very useful. Okay. For uh, Viterbi, okay. It's, okay. So the question was, is, how do you, how do you do computation of probability of error? Okay. So in general, for soft decoders and ML decoders and MAP decoders and all, you just simulate. Typically simulate. And you're happy with simulation. Today's computers are fast enough. Simulate. But at high SNRs for Viterbi and all that, you can estimate. An estimate and the estimate is very good, and uh, using union bound techniques, one can estimate. It, it involves finding some error paths, etc. Basically, you find the closest uh, comp computer to a to a, the all zero code word, for instance. Then figure out what's the probability you'll get there, and then do a union bound and somehow get your way through. So it's tough to do the exact computation. Union bounds are possible. And at high SNR, when when I mean high SNR. When you come down to 10 power minus 6, etc., but those values are quite reasonably good, and, and the SNR is also good enough, high enough. So. But sometimes that will also fail. So. Okay, so this is what you do in stage i. Okay, so what's your, what do you have after stage i? <coughs> When you reach stage i, okay, at stage corresponding to stage i, you will have your Received values, right? Using that, you have to compute your 
branch metrics okay so you have received values r0 i r1 i okay i'll stick to just two okay if you have rate 1 by m you'll have m minus 1 of these it's not a problem and the first step you do is compute branch metrics I'll say, I don't know what to do. I'll say S comma T. Okay. Right. S goes from 0, 1, 2, to 2 power mu minus 1. Okay. For each S, what will be T? T will take two values, right? For each S corresponding to the trellis. Okay. Right. So, for each S, T takes two values. Okay. For a feed forward simple encoder, for a given S, how will you find the two T's? You shift and then put in 0 or 1. Okay. So, it is very easy to do. So, if I give you any integer, all you have to do is find its binary mu bit representation, shift it write by 1 and put a 0 to get the one value of t, put a 1 to get another value of t. Okay, right. So, for in, the, in this computation, you will be using the output corresponding to this branch okay? and then you will do that. Okay, So, you can also optimize this computation and do it very fast. So, once you have the branch matrix ready, you have the whole, uh, the whole thing set up. Okay, so another thing that you should have before you come to stage i is you should have processed all the previous stages. Okay? So, do not just generally jump to stage i. To process all the previous stages. Once you are done with stage i minus 1, what will you have? You will have two things. Okay, you will have the survivor paths and you will have the state metrics. Okay, so those two you will have. Okay, so now we will use those two. Okay, so I will say sp i minus 1 of s and what? This is the survivor path. Okay, so, so this will be this is given to you. That's given to you. Okay, you also have state metrics. Okay, so these two you already have. Okay, these two are available from from previous computations. R comes from the channel, right? The received value comes from the channel. These two are available from previous computations. So so the whole whole point of doing the computation in stage i is to figure out sp i s and sp sm i s okay and that's very easy to do one can easily describe this okay okay for t equals 0 1 2 power mu minus 1 you will have to do the computation okay so so one can write it out in a proper fashion, but I'm going to simply say, you find SP IT. I'm sorry. No, I'm just going to do T. It's already put S as a plus the previous state. T is the next. And SM I. Okay, for this, at a particular T. You will have the, you will look at the two possible S's from which you could have come from. So, two possible previous states. How will you do that in terms of bit computation? If I give you a particular T on the right hand side, what are the two states from which it could have come from? You shift to the left and then add a 0 or a 1 in the first place. So, that is a very simple computation that you can do. Okay. So, if you think in terms of uh, hardware addressing, etc., all these things are easy. Okay, so, you can easily do a simple shift to figure out what index the value will be sitting in. Okay, so, all these things are useful, but in today's MATLAB world, you guys probably do not even worry about all these things. <laughs> if you actually want your code to run fast, you have to worry about all these things. Anyway, so, you do this and then this is what you do in stage i. Once you come to stage k plus mu, sp k plus mu of 0 is your final output ml path. Okay, so, that is it. Okay, so maybe I'll write that down somewhere here. So maybe what should I write? Out of space. Okay, so I'll put a box here and write down that. 
okay final ml path is what sp k plus mu zero okay so after k plus mu stages what's the survival path at stage zero you have only stage zero right after k plus mu so survival path there is yeah okay so so there are there are some 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 gen so so if you have a rate 1 by m uh, encoder the only thing that will change is you will have m different r's and your branch metric computation will change nothing else will change okay everything else remains the same if i have two input streams and several output streams okay then what will happen okay number of branches going out of each state will increase okay so instead of having one two branches you will have four branches okay but again the steps is the same you will have four branches going out of each state four branches coming into each state and each branch will correspond to different outputs and all that so you compute branch matrix for all the branches and do the same thing for each state you look at the branch which will give you the lowest possible metric for the survival path and you pick that ignore all the remaining yeah any m input stream and input stream also you can do this okay even if you have a rate m by n encoder how many survival paths will you have after stage i 2 per mu okay. it's always 2 per mu it's always 2 path number of states there's nothing more than that okay so number of states have to be very less if you want to decode very well yeah the branch metric computation probably a little bit more i don't know it doesn't see if you're smart about it it won't increase very linearly so how many possible different uh, see you'll you'll only have so many different symbols possible at a particular stage and you'll have to do only that computation and for bpsk and all that in fact a lot of uh, you don't have to do r minus s squared it's enough if you do the correlation and maximize as opposed to minimize there are lots of ways of simplifying the computation okay so so that's fine so i think uh, today if you want some systems which use uh, these kind of decoders when until recently maybe about 10 years or so ago people were using bitterby i mean convolutional codes in deep space communication convolutional codes and reed solomon codes in a sequence i'll talk about this a little bit more so convolutional codes were being used in deep space they are now getting slowly replaced by some other uh, codes okay so maybe potentially maybe for space communication we'll see turbo codes or some such new codes so no enough maybe i think some of the satellites some of the some some, some already used turbo codes if i'm not wrong okay another place where uh, convolutional codes are used even today is uh, hard disk uh, no no i'm i'm, I'm sorry so i'm sorry it's not that's not uh, another place where it's used they were used in modems telephone line modems okay so that's one more place where uh, convolutional codes are used the reason why i got confused with hard drives is in hard drives they use the viterbi algorithm for doing something called equalization okay so the viterbi algorithm if you have, if you have read some digital communication uh, if you done some course you see viterbi algorithm can also be used for equalization okay, for optimal equalization so that's used in several places i got confused with that sorry so but for telephone line modems long time back they were using convolution codes but today's dsl modems i don't think use convolution codes do they i'm not sure okay but convolution codes have a place in every wireless standard that's out there Okay, so if you look at, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe there are people here who know wireless standards better than I do. But any one of these 3G, PP, LTE, any one of those things you take, always has a convolutional code. Okay, so I think I'm not sure what rate it is. Maybe it's a rate one by three or something. And that I believe it's a uh, some standards even have 64 state convolutional codes. Okay, so these are used in your cell phones when you make a call, for instance. So this is used a lot. Okay. So in terms of state of the art, one can implement 64 state at very high speeds. In terms of implementation, I've seen a lot of 64 state uh, Viterbi decoders implemented very fast. I can't give you exact numbers, but beyond that, it's tough today. I think uh, if you go beyond 64 state, you have to go to 128 state or something, and then it becomes it's too nasty. It's too much memory going around. People people usually never go beyond 64 state in terms of implementation. and we see later on when used in what's called a turbo configuration these codes become really powerful and for those people use only eight state convolution codes use eight state 
use it in a turbo configuration okay and there are a few other recent work but usually convolutional codes are considered old in the literature if people don't work very actively new problems that's all it's considered uh, reasonably old okay all right so i think let's uh, uh, let's wrap up the viterbi with that then move on towards uh, towards turbo codes okay so we're slowly going towards turbo codes so one one ingredient before we go towards that is uh, is recursive convolutional encoders so far we have not seen recursive feedback convolutional encoders i'm going to see recursive convolutional encoders okay again we'll see with examples okay so 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 far what have we been seeing we've been looking at uh generator matrices of this form right 1 plus d plus d squared 1 plus d squared okay okay so what does it mean ultimately what does it mean this is giving you a relationship between the output at time n and the input at time n n minus 1 and n minus 2 so it, it's giving you some kind of a difference equation between the input and the output right so very similar to filtering so what i was saying when you implemented it looks very much like some dsp filtering and all that okay so one can also imagine having a feedback type filter where the delayed outputs are also used so far we have never used delayed outputs we only use delayed inputs and it's a purely feed forward system okay so you can do a feedback and use delayed inputs as well okay in fact you can do a small modification to this g of d and get what's called a systematic recursive feedback version of this encoder so what i'm going to do is i'm going to divide each term by 1 plus d plus d square okay so you have to worry a lot about what does it mean to divide and what is this division suddenly you have so 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 far we had only polynomials in d now we'll have rationals in d right rational function in d numerator also a polynomial denominator also a polynomial but all these things have a proper theoretical framework if you're interested i can give you references for looking that up okay but we'll just do it in an approximate way just to give you a feel for how it works out, okay so i'll i'll convert to systematic form in the following way convert to what i'll call a systematic form by dividing throughout with 1 plus d plus d square so what you get as a result is what i call gsd which is 1 and then 1 plus d square divided by 1 plus d plus d square okay so this is what i've got i'll i'll give you interpretations for it but before that a brief remark about systematic systematic is always useful right previously we never had the the previous encoders were not systematic okay the message did not appear by itself in the code word maybe one can argue there is some advantage in having a systematic uh, encoder okay so so you might say why because the decoder side we never really had any advantage because of the systematic form right even though it was not systematic we could quickly figure out what the message was there was really no complexity as far as the message was concerned there was really no problem there but but that's not the main issue there might be other issues for why you want systematic okay for instance your input message might have certain statistics which you like maybe it is equal equal probable and zero and one and maybe if you don't make retain the systematic uh, statistics maybe you lose all that okay so there are so many advantages to having systematic uh, encoder so that's one advantage that this readily gives you but the other advantage disadvantage is you're not sure what this means okay so previously we were we could easily implement 1 plus d plus d square and 1 plus d square using d flip flops and shift register can we do the same thing here is the first question you should ask okay one can do it it's just a difference equation with feedback and output delayed you can do it but before we do that let's look at what this what these equations mean okay so how do i encode i multiply g of d with u of d on the left hand side okay so if i do that i notice okay so my v of d is going to be u of d times gs d okay so what is v of d v of d will have two parts v0 d and v1 d okay so if i do this what do i get my v0d to be equal to ud 
Okay, so this I can very easily implement. The message by itself goes to v0. There's no problem. I can easily do this. Look at the next step. What's happening? v1 d equals 1 plus d squared by 1 plus d plus d squared ud. This looks a little scary in this form, but how, how do you make it look simple? Yeah, take this denominator and bring it to the left hand side. Just multiply throughout by the denominator. You see it, it readily simplifies. It becomes 1 plus d plus d squared times v1d equals 1 plus d squared times ud. So in this form, it is nothing but a difference equation. Okay, let me write it in time domain for you. Okay. In time domain, out of this d domain, what does that equation mean? It means v1n plus v1 n minus 1 v1 n minus 2 equals un plus u n minus 2. Okay, so from this I can quickly compute v1n. How will I compute v1n? Simply move this case to the other side. Okay, so at least conceptually you can see that it can be very very easily done. Okay, but from an implementation point of view. I don't want my number of states to be too large. I don't want too many D flip flops in my implementation. I don't want to keep delaying the input with one thing and the output with one more D, two D flip flops. Then instead of having two states, I'll have four states. That I don't want. Okay, so I have to be smart about my implementation, and this is actually quite standard. Even digital filters, people worry about reducing the number of delays and doing it properly. It's quite standard in linear system theory how you how you implement these difference equations with minimum number of delay delay elements okay so i'm not going to go into great detail here and i'm going to throw you a puzzle today before before you before we wind up maybe we'll solve it today itself we have time i'm going to draw a circuit which i claim will implement those exact same things okay and you have to come up with reasons for tell me whether it's true or not or if i'm just pulling your leg or whether it's whether you believe me or not okay so i'm going to draw it see let's see how it works out okay so here's how you should do it Okay, so V1 is the only non-trivial part. What is V0? V0 is just generally connected to. Okay. Question is, do you believe me or not? Okay. Maybe many of you believe me, but you have to check. Does it even make sense? <laughs> happy, not happy. Some people are happy, some people are not happy. Think about it for a while. What? Yeah, so exactly. So if you remember your filter implementations that you might have studied in maybe systems theory, DSP systems and all that, when you have these IAR filters, there are different ways of implementing them there's one some canonical forms okay very standard canonical forms okay so this i believe is one such form i hope i'm right if i, if I made a goof up here then it would look a little bit embarrassing but i think it's correct okay so this thing will uh, give you what you want okay so the trick to that is call this w okay first figure out what w is in terms of yeah yeah and then you delay w okay so let's try to find out wd if this is w of d what is this w delayed by 1 right so this is this is wn this is w n minus 1 this is w n minus 2 okay and then what is wn now un plus wn minus 1 plus w n minus 2 so what is w of d in terms of u of d by 1 plus d plus d square and what is v1 now wn plus w n minus 2 
Okay, so that's 1 plus d square into u of d by 1 plus t plus d square. Okay, so this is uh, so once you re realize that this w is the key. Okay, one can very easily show this is true. Okay, this will come straight away from the difference equation that this implies. Okay, so w w this is so this is w n. Okay, maybe we'll write n just to be sure n minus 1 w n minus 2. So write out this difference equation you will see immediately you get 1 plus d plus d square into u of d. Okay. Then you see v of d will be simply 1 plus d square into w of d which is 1 plus d square by 1 plus d plus d square. Yeah, yeah. So typically in filters you will see the people will multiply by minus 1 the gains will get multiplied. Here you don't have any gains. I just have XORs. It's all of them are one. It's no problem. It's all bits, so I get that. Okay. So there's enormous benefit in doing this. See, if you end up delaying V1, you'll end up getting what? Two more D flip flops. So that makes it 16 state as opposed to four state, which is actually what it should be, right? The system, the non non systematic feed forward encoder has only had only four states. So this one is also having only four states. So you might as well do this. Okay, so so the next thing is to draw the trellis for this. I have not I have not come to that. So the question is, how do we compare this encoder with the previous feed forward encoder that we had? Okay, so there are a lot of formal ways of properly defining the code itself. See, I never define the convolutional code, the set of code words. I never define them. You have to define it properly. Make sure the denominators go away. And then, then you can show that these two codes are pretty much equivalent. If you list out all the code words, you'll get the same set for a particular length. Okay. Yes. Do you have a question? Yeah. So what will happen? What there'll be one difference definitely between this encoder and the previous encoder. The mapping from message to a code words will not be the same, but the contention is the list of code words is exactly the same. You can you can show them. Maybe we'll maybe we'll look at it for small lens and convince ourselves the rest. Okay. Okay. So so one can draw a trellis here. Now now we have to be very careful about this trellis. Okay. So this can be a little bit convoluted and confusing because your next states are not easy to determine. Right. Your next states are different. Okay. So it takes it's, it's important to have practice in drawing the trellis for this. Okay. And there'll be some race conditions type situation, which you'll get confused about. You'll say, okay, this is already zero, but this has become one, so that will change, so this will change. So you should know that there are some th those kind of things you should you should should have an understanding of. Okay, this is very standard in digital systems. You must have seen this before. Okay, when you do feedback with these uh, with these D flip flops, this feedback. What are they called? This one uh, very standard. There's some some standard arrangements. You have to be careful about when the input change and when the outputs change. Okay, so those things are all some things to worry about. Okay, so maybe in the next class I'll start out by just doing a trellis and then give you some description about the differences between this encoder and that this en that encoder and this encoder. Okay, those differences are important for us. Okay, when we make a transition to turbo codes, I'll use some of those differences to justify why turbo codes work. Okay, that's what we. We'll okay, so we'll stop here for today.